Okay, step three. Let's see whether I can fumble my way through this. Um, the next step basically is to make sure that we get this completely automated, well, as automated as it can be right now. I really recommend if you want to look into this, look at this, um, the system guide again that comes with the system as one of the compendium entries. And uh, there's a section at the bottom here because it changes it considerably. So um, you have to make always make sure that stuff is equipped, otherwise nothing gets calculated correct. But the, the key thing here is this bit here in the middle. If a player correct, uh, attacks an NPC, the player has to select its target, then click on the weapon to do the attack, same as before. However, if an NPC attacks a PC, and this is unusual for Simbaroon, the GM selects the target and then clicks on the NPC's weapon. So that is a change um, to the way the system works. So it then has got a couple of um, uh, explanations and examples here. And it should allow me, if this all works as it should, uh, claims here, to apply the results to the token afterwards as well. So again, we have our domineering robber and we've got Reeb. Um, I currently have, as an NPC, oh, sorry, I'll just deselect the target here. Um, as a PC, I have targeted my robber. So you can see that by the uh, Sharons again. And as an NPC, I can now see this with a little bubble on there. That's the player color saying, oh, okay, he's targeting that one. And as an NPC, I'm going to just do my easy target here and select him. So I now know he's targeted, he knows he's targeted. He also sees the, sees the little bubble. So, um, my NPC, if I remember correctly, went first in the initiative. So what I'm going to do, as he is now attacking, Grieb is now attacking the robber. He's using his weapon, he's using his dagger again because he's close up. Yeah, and basically this has changed a little bit. I'm not uh, attacking with advantage, I'm not ignoring armor, but I could enter all these things here and just Roll. You, can, you see, I do not have to enter. Oh, um, go against this defense. Yeah, that is automated that bit. So I click roll. Let's see. Oh, that's a miss. So just because I've got my my dual attack, I'm going to do it again with a parrying dagger this time. And finally, we miss. So what we get um, damage is one d six minus three. <laughs> I rolled a three which means I don't actually get any damage through. Tough luck. Tough luck. So, I now turn it around. And instead of saying to Grieb, can you please pick the, the guy who's attacking you and then defend against them, I just do this from my screen up here. So I go to my dominating robber, I go to his weapons and says he's using his sword. So modify the same window as Grieb had. I say roll. I miss. Oh, that's pity. You know what? I'm going to give him a couple of bonus attacks because I want to show what happens when he actually hits. So I'm a nasty GM. That's still not a hit, is it? And again. But you can see it's a lot quicker than having to dive. Oh, that's better. Um, to dive into the character sheets. So what I saw there, you can see now I've got this here. Damage is 4 plus 3 minus 1d4. That's the armor from Greed. He gets four damage. It's all calculated. Who attacks whom with what? Um, the stats are given that we use. The modifiers are given. What did I roll? Okay. And I can now say, yeah, Grieb is currently healthy. You can see that by the bar. Apply results to the token. And that should now have, see the bar? That has now removed part of his health, four points. So, let's give Grieb another chance here to hit. No, Grieb is not in luck. I'm going to ignore that crit. Critical fumble. Ah, oh, come on, Goblin. Give the Goblin a cheer here. He needs it. He needs some love. That should be enough. Oh, <laughs> sorry, what I did there, and this is a typical mistake my players will make, I'm sure about this. I forgot when I double clicked to to open up my character sheet, it said the target is green. So he was attacking himself, which is not what I want to do. So let me just try that again, targeting the right guy. Oh, uh, come on, you can't have that many 20s, it's not fair. There we go. 
So again, I get three damage, and this time as a GM, I might say, okay, apply this to the token. Uh, of course, I have to do that from my screen. So if I now go from a GM screen, I can now tell you that he's got damage. So that's where they're going with the with the automation of this. I think if that comes off, um, it'll really speed up the game. My slight issue with that is you, as a GM, you lose a lot of control of what's going on. Um, Yes, I still have the button to apply it, but one of my big grievances with the previous system I used on Fantasy Grounds, the Simba Room, was I could tell sometimes that the calculations were off, but I couldn't understand at what step they were going wrong, whether I had made a mistake in my, my entry of data or whether it was the, the algorithm running over that was making it wrong. So I hope that they keep the transparency. And here, here at least you really can see what went into the calculation. You've got all the stats here. You can say, all right, yeah, he used discrete. That's good, because he needs discrete. The defense is zero. So you can track any problems. Um, as long as I keep that transparent, I think this is going to be really cool once the combat enhancement is fully there. Right, so that's the, s the third step. I hope the whole thing together makes sense. Not sure whether I'm going to put this into one or into three. Um, modules yet, sorry, videos yet, but if you found that interesting, if you know, want to know more about particular aspects of this, put a comment on, get in touch. Yeah, thanks.